Yo, it's Bo. Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Have you ever wished you could build your own space center anywhere in the Kerbal system? Today I'm going to be walking you through how to do it using Kerbal Constructs. Okay, step one is to install the mod. These are all available on CCAN and for manual install, so it's pretty easy. You're going to need Kerbal Constructs, Custom Launch Checks, which is a dependency, and a static pack that you would like. If you don't want to, that's fine, but I'm using Omega Stock-like structures, which basically just adds some extra buildings you can use. Actually, every building I'm going to use today is from OSS. Step two is to find a spot for your base and go there. So here I am with a lander on the launch pad. I'm going to open up the cheats menu and cheat my way into a low min miss orbit. You can go there, you know, the normal way yourself, but out of the interest of time, I'm just, you know, auto warping myself out there. And the reason why I've chosen min miss for this video is it has these really nice flat plains uh, among the mountains. And so those are going to be a good spot for our base, especially to learn how to use Kerbal Constructs. And uh, this looks like a nice spot here. I'm going to burn retrograde. And yeah, it looks like this little crater right here is where I'm going to build my base. And yeah, look, look at how flat it is. That's going to be really great. And now that you're landed, another thing that you're going to want to do is shut off your engine. That's important. And step three is to make an active site group. So you're going to press Control K and it's going to open up the Kerbal Constructs menu. You're going to want to press this button called Spawn New Group and click on New Group and then you can name your new site here. So I'm naming it Minmus Base, pretty straightforward. I'm going to click OK and you have this little gumball here. You're going to want to drag that a little bit a ways away from your lander and hit save and close. This is going to be like the center reference point for your base. And click on your base and make sure to set it as the active group. All right, step four is to design and build your base. So you're going to click spawn new and you're going to see this list of buildings that you can place. I'm going to be using, there's like stock buildings, but I'm going to be using the ones from Omega Stock Alike Structures. So there's a filter category search down below. I'm going to hit OSS. Uh, I'm going to type that in and then press that search button to the right of it and then that's going to filter it out So only OSS buildings are going to be showing up first thing I'm going to place is this hex vehicle spawn here And so this is our first building that we're placing I'm going to drag the building away from where our lander is you can see it in the corner there If you accidentally place it on top of your lander, it will probably destroy it So don't do that. So drag it away maybe over closer to the center of your site and you, you have a number of options. You can lower it into the ground. This is probably most of what you're gonna be doing to achieve like the right height. Uh, but you also have this instance editor that gives you more specific control, like the color selector, which can change the color of the base um, for the part itself. I tend to kind of like it to be like a gray or a concrete. So an easy way to do that is to just hit that edit color and then mess around with the alpha slider. Another thing that you can do is mess with the yaw there's a bunch of orientation slash position controls that you can use to orient the building as you wish. And then once you're done, you can hit save or save and close at the bottom of the instance editor. So I just hit that and it's placed. Now we got to pick our second building. This is going to be like a vertical assembly building type uh, thing. And you can mess around. I, what I like to do is I like to make sure that they're kind of on the same level, like height wise. And so you can use the other one as a reference and kind of drag it up and down, which is what I'm doing here. I want this little crawler track to lead out to the uh, hex launch pad, uh, but I have an extra part for that. So I'm going to hit save and close and open up one of the crawler ways. And uh, yeah, so I'll move this over here. This is like uh, the crawler track for the big, you know, tractor that hauls your rocket out onto the launch pad and you can mess around to get it placed slightly. All of these buildings were designed to work really well together. You can also edit the position of a part in the statics editor. You can just click on it again and it'll reopen that instance editor. And this is really useful if you just wanna replace something or adjust it, hit save and close again and you're good to go. So I just opened up another part. This is like a landing pad type part. Uh, this is like going to be our spot where our incoming landers can land safely away from the main buildings. So I'm just changing the color here and getting this placed. And a useful thing in the instance editor is you can, uh, well I guess I'm going to hit save and close first, but you can click on it again in the statics editor and you can hit duplicate and you can just drag it over slightly to the side and that will duplicate your part. So I'm going to have three of them kind of next to each other. That's going to be a really nice larger target to aim for when we're coming in for our landings. So there's our second one placed. I'll just hit duplicate again and drag our third one out, edit the position and edit the color, I guess. Yes. And yeah, hit save and close to make that permanent for now. And our next building 
is going to be a road. So I think maybe we should have a road connecting the landing pad so that you know when the incoming crews come in for a landing, they can be picked up by a rover and brought back to one of the processing facilities for debrief or you know decontamination if they went to like an alien planet or something. Uh, but yeah, so I'm building these roads out to behind uh, the assembly building. And there's multiple different road parts that you can use. There's like curves and there's roads of varying lengths. And so that's what I'm setting up here. I'm kind of cutting ahead to save you the more boring parts. I think this base took me about an hour to build in real time, but I did have experience building a previous base before, which I showcased in one of my other videos. I think it's called Mun Spaceport, so I built like a Kerbal Constructs launch facility on the Mun, and I flew a really cool space plane that I built out to land at the site. I'll link that at the end of the video if you want to go check it out, and I've just opened up a new part. This is like a launch tower slash vertical integration facility. I'm going to be placing this right next to the hex launch uh, vehicle spawn launch pad thing, and I'm going to line that up. This is going to be really nice next to our rockets and the next part is going to be this mini launch control center i'm going to kind of try to place it close to the uh, landing pad so that you know like the crew or you know launch control can watch the landers come in for landing that's kind of my idea for that anyways i'm just going to go about putting in some extra buildings and i might just kind of comment on some other things while uh, i work on this you guys kind of know how it works so you basically just spawn a building drag it into position hit save and close and that adds to your list of instances and so right here i'm just adding some extra like you know research buildings or you know maintenance utility you know science buildings whatever you want to call them just to try to build out the aesthetics of the base but yeah like i was saying if you guys are enjoying this video or you're finding this sort of content useful for your Kerbal Space Program experience, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. For more content like this, I'd much appreciate it. I'm trying to reach uh, 10k subscribers by the end of the year. We'll see if we can get that done, but yeah, thanks guys. Okay, here we are back to the nitty gritty of building your base. One thing that's useful about these OSS parts, Omega stock alike structures, is that they come with these hexagonal base uh, kind of concrete layouts, which makes it actually really useful to place them and line them up together because the edges of the hexagons kind of help you align the buildings and create like a really cohesive look. That's uh, one of the reasons I really like Omega stock alike structures. And another reason I really like it and why I'm showing it off here is, uh, well, the way Kerbal Constructs works is that, uh, like, picture the uh, VAB or the launch sites on Kerbin. Those are all the same kind of buildings that you see here. And they're placed so uh, you even have access to the stock you know, buildings on the curb and launch sites. Like if you wanted to use those parts on Minmus, you totally can, but they have the grass bases and you should in theory be able to change those to a different color, but I had trouble like figuring that out or making that consistent. And with Omega stock like structures, all you have to do is drag on that, you know, edit color. And then there's the A slider. You can play around with that. And you can get like some level of concrete color, which works for me so that's one of the reasons why i'm using omega stock like structures it also is a smaller download i think because all of the textures for the buildings are reused from stock buildings which is nice and i've basically set up my base how i've wanted it so i'm just going back through and changing all of the colors of the bases to like a more asphalt concrete style uh, that darker color to make it stand out against the ice flats on minmus and uh, yeah, that's our base done. So we've hit save and close and our base is complete. So we're gonna do a quick hop with our lander over to land at one of the pads that we've got set up here on the edge of the base, making sure not to crash after all that work. And we're coming in for a really nice landing. All right, step five is to activate the launch site. So if you wanna launch rockets or rovers or something like that on your base, go ahead and go into your instance selector and click on the hex launch pad. On this menu here, hit make launch site. It'll open up this menu where you can uh, name this particular launch pad. There's some other options. I don't really know what some of these mean. So I just basically hit save 
And what that will do once you, you know, hit save is activate this launch pad that you can access from the VAB. So this whole base should be fully functional. All we have to do is go into the VAB back on Kerbin and we can select it. I kind of messed up on the borders of my recording, but there should be a button down to the right that says Kerbal Constructs on it, along with your other mods. And you'll see a list of launch sites in your launch site selector. You're gonna wanna click Minmus Base and on the left, Hit open base for zero funds and then set it as your launch site. And then up on the kind of where uh, you have your you know launch button, you'll see it as a selectable option and then you just click launch. And here it is. So here we have a rover that I've launched officially on my launch pad. I guess it's not a rocket. And uh, while I drive this thing around or attempt to drive it around, I forgot that Minmus has such low gravity. It's actually awful to drive, so I'm gonna revert and launch something else. There we go, a Saturn V. So we've got our Saturn V on the launch pad. One of the benefits of like one of these bases on a low gravity moon or object, kind of like Minmus, is that your rockets are gonna go way further than they would on Kerbin. Because on Kerbin you have much higher gravity and you also have the atmosphere in the way, so that when you launch a rocket like this Saturn V, which is one of the stock, you know, rockets that you come with you can go way further than you could ever go on Kerbin with that size of rocket that is basically it takes much less delta v to get into orbit and like a wise Kerbal once said getting into orbit is halfway to anywhere and that's pretty true uh, for the Saturn V in this case this guy can probably go to any planet in the entire Kerbal system just by the delta v savings alone on launching it on a lower gravity moon like minmus this is especially helpful for launching those insanely large vehicles that would just be really impractical to fly into orbit from kerbin and this is really useful for building like giant interstellar vehicles all right that's all well and good but what if you want to build a base somewhere not so flat so i'm going to introduce you to something called map decals so you can edit map decals and spawn a new map decal it will give you this gumball that you can drag across you know maybe to somewhere like this that's more you know not flat and it gives you this little x like x marks the spot right and so on your right menu it has some things but basically what you want to look at is this height map right here it'll give you some options they're all slightly different oh that's way smaller um, but it'll basically build like a small flat little platform for you um, and so if you increase the radius here that'll make it much larger and I'll play with the height so it's maybe a little bit closer to the ground and there we have a nice flat spot and it looks kind of slanted but that's basically because Minmus is such a small object and we're it's basically building that reference point from the uh, active group site that we set earlier so if we drag it over closer to the base it's actually more flat so nearby your base you can build these nice flat platforms and you can get them even really like much lower to the ground um, than this so that they blend in with the terrain more uh, you know on a more bumpy spot this would be a little bit better but there's all these other height maps you can play with they're all kind of slightly different they basically just give a slightly different geometry to the ground but yeah that's how you do it make sure to hit apply and save and you should be able to edit these even after the fact in the instance editor just under the map decals uh, list Okay, step six is to enable map visibility. So you know how you can see like, you know, the KSC in the map view or on Kerbin? So if we go to Minmus over here, there's a button in the right below. Again, it's cut off from my, you know, crappy recording. But if you click Kerbal Constructs, it opens this menu in the top left. And if you click this button called Other, your base should pop up and it gives you these other options but I don't really know what that means anyways that's how you can use uh, a waypoint or you know that spot in the map view to make a precision landing at your base and uh, that's basically all I know right now on how to work Kerbal Constructs so I hope that's been like helpful for you guys there's probably some extra features or things that you can do that I don't know about yet but that's basically the basics and I wanted to show off some of the other things that you can build with Kerbal Constructs. So I had my fans in my Discord server send some of their creations. And uh, since I'm my own biggest fan, I guess, here's my MUN base. This is the only other Kerbal Constructs base I've ever built. Yep, I think it's pretty cool, but let's check out some Bogue fan creations. And while I let those roll, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I'd like to give a shout out to all of the fans who sent stuff in for me to show off for you guys. And uh, yeah, thanks for being so supportive and contributing to my patreon and helping me make videos like this really appreciate it so uh yeah check in next week for another video i'll see you guys next time